Hi guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get anything going, please subscribe. Please, pretty please. I'm begging. I know someone will complain about this that doesn't usually come to one of my channels, but please subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> um, today's video, we're going to move a little bit away from the rock and in more into the country again uh, with... Um, president of country music, Mr. George Jones, and 10 things that uh, you might not know about him. Let's take a look. He grew up busking on the streets of Beaumont. Jones knew how to entertain from an early age, and his overbearing alcoholic father even forced him to sing, and bought him his first guitar at the age of nine, soon after Jones began busking on the streets of Texas. Met his idol, Hank Williams, while working at the radio station. While still in his teens, Jones got a gig playing guitar on a radio show on the Beaumont w or KRIC radio station. One afternoon, his most significant musical influence, Hank Williams, stopped by the studio to perform. Jones would go on to sing a duet with Hank Williams Jr., I Don't Care If Tomorrow Ever Comes. He cut a rock of belly tracks under the pseudonym of Thumper Jones. Attempting to recreate the success of Elvis Presley, Jones' label pressured him to record a few rockabilly tracks in 1956. Having no interest in being associated with the rock and roll market, he refused to use his real name on the records. His favorite country singer is his friend Merle Haggard. Jones first saw Merle Haggard perform in 1961 at the Blackboard Cafe in Bakersfield, California. Mesmerized by Haggard's voice, Jones drunkenly kicked in the doors of the office and demanded to know who was singing. In a Rolling Stone article, Haggard wrote, It was one of the greatest compliments of my entire life when George Jones said I was his favorite country singer. He hated he stopped loving her today at first. He stopped loving her today is widely considered to be one of the finest, not to mention saddest, country songs ever written. But Jones was initially not impressed and considered the song too morbid to sell. He stopped loving her today went on to win the Academy of Country Music Award for Singer of the Year and Song of the Year in 1980 and revived the singer's previously tanking career. He also won Country Music Association Song of the Year in 80 and 81. Before this song, he hadn't had a hit in years, and due to his heavy drug use, earned a nickname No Show Jones for all the shows he would miss. During his dark time and his financial troubles, and fellow country singers Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash would often help him in his time of need. One night, the possum managed to lose $2,500 in earnings. When he approached his manager, Pappy Daly, for more cash, Daly informed Jones that the singer had flushed the cash down the toilet while partying the previous night. Jones' reply, it wasn't the $1,200. He was an accomplished songwriter. Though he's known for the tear-soaked voice, Jones is also pretty handy with a pen. He co-wrote Color of the Blues, which was recorded by Loretta Lynn in Tall Tall Trees, with Roger Miller, which became a hit for Alan Jackson in 1995. He professed his love for Tammy Wynette whilst uh, having dinner with her and her husband. The tumultuous uh, union be uh, between the president and the first lady of country music began when Jones professed his love for Wynette after witnessing a fight at the dinner table between the singer and her then-husband songwriter Don Chappell. He credited his fourth wife, Nancy, with saving his life. After his split from Tammy Wynette, Jones' personal life was in shambles. He was deeply in debt, addicted to cocaine, and spent his days binging, binge drinking. In 81, Jones met Nancy Sepulvado on a blind date, and the two fell in love. She eventually helped Jones get his finances in order and kick his cocaine addiction. He refused to attend the CMA Awards after he was asked to perform an abridged version of his song, Choices. When asked to perform a shortened version of Choices on the 99 CMA Awards, the singer boycotted the awards show, offended by the notion that he should have to abbreviate such a personal song. Alan Jackson paid tribute to Jones by interrupting his performance of his hit, Pop a Top, to sing the Possum's Choices, reminding the audience of the importance of honoring legends like George Jones. And uh, there is a book out on George Jones I have read, and man, the man, the guy had a life, I'm here to tell you, it's a rough one. Uh, thank God he found uh, 
I don't like that term, finding God, because God's always there, but thank God uh, he got a relationship with Jesus before he passed away, uh, thanks to his, uh, his wife. Uh, but man, he was a crazy life, crazy life. Uh, I had one person tell me one time, said uh, he couldn't compare to the rockers and what kind of party life he led. Please, uh, children, please. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Uh, have a great day. Please subscribe. Thank you so much. And please share these out to family and friends. I really like to boost uh, the viewership, if nothing else. Um, I went from over 4,000 views for the Dillards the other day to, I think, about 60 for Jerry Lee Lewis. So let me know what you want to see. That's all you got to do. In the comments below. And I'll do my best. Have a great day. God bless. Be praying for you.